fatigue introduction to fatigue so fatigue is another kind of failure right as like corrosion as like corrosion fatigue is another kind of failure fatigue may occur when a member is subject to a repeated cyclic loadings right repeated cyclic loadings due to the action of fluctuating stress according to the terminology used in this uh, en the sentence repeated cyclic loadings right so if certain act is happening again and again and again right that will create fatigue stress and failure in the object the fatigue phenomenon shows itself in the form of cracks developing at the particular location in the structure right so in fatigue failure the cracks would start probably at the surface of the structure and develop deep into that cracks can appear in diverse types of structures such as planes boards bridges frames cranes or it cranes machine parts so these all are examples where fatigue can occur turbines uh, reactor cells canal lock doors offshore platforms transient towers polyons right these all are few examples right structure subject to repeated cyclic loading so the word is important right repeated cyclic loading so cyclic loading means a crust and a trough so this is a cyclic loading repeated cyclic loading means this is occurring again and again right so it is like a um, sine curve or you can say ac current right something like that right so if you consider this as positive side this will be negative side so that will not rotate in this axis right that will rotate like this okay something like this positive and negative positive and negative so repeated cyclic loadings can undergo progressive damage which shows itself by pro propagation of cracks right so that is progressive damage right so damage will start at a point then it will propagate right so if uh, this is my structure that will start at the surface and propagate to the uh, throughout the metal which shows itself by propagation of cracks so you can see the propagation of cracks so if these are the two parts part 1 and part 2 so at the start of the experiment they will be like this right one part at the break right say for example if it is break somewhere here this surface will be like this and this surface will be like this so you we say it as cup and cone structure right so this will be looking like cup and this will be looking like cone which shows itself by the propagation of cracks this damage is called fatigue and is represented by a loss of resistance with time right loss of resistance with time so when it is undergoing cyclic loading again and again right it will lose its strength with time and there will be a failure right so this is what meant by fatigue failure a member which is subjected to repeated cyclic loadings undergo the fatigue failure with time okay so this is the introduction of fatigue failure the physical effect of a repeated load on a material is different from the static load so first we will see what is static load and what is repeated load say for example you have a pulley right you have pulley and you hang two objects on both the sides all right so this is a kind of weight and this is also weight so this is static load right this is static load but if you have a pulley and if you hang two weights right and you are pulling one time this way and pulling one time this way right this way and this way or in other words the axle of a vehicle right so you know if you have seen in the bottom of a vehicle big vehicles like lorries and all one axle will be keep on rotating all the time right so something like that is repeated load right so this is repeated load and here it is static load 
so the physical effect of a repeated load automatically is different from the stretching load so these two are not same right even if this is w and this is w the effect of the static load and repeated load will not be the same so you couldn't observe any other difference this is also pretty this is also pretty simply here also two w's are hanging here also two w's are hanging only thing is this is staying stable this one we are applying force this way and this way this way and this way right so these two will not be the same right failure always being brittle fracture regardless of whether the material is brittle or ductile right so while in the fatigue failure the failure will always be brittle right so that would be a kind of break regardless of whether the material is brittle or ductile so you know brittle material is readily break into pieces example is glass okay ductile material when they fall they will uh, there will be a change of shape right so these metals while you are hitting them they will elongate or they will increase the area so they are ductile right glass structures they are brittle but this fatigue failure regardless whether of material is brittle or ductile fatigue failure will always be brittle right fatigue failure is always brittle so for brittle material also failure is brittle for ductile material also that is brittle next one mostly fatigue failure occur at stress well below the static elastic strength of the material so this is the important part here so this does not have anything to do with the maximum stress right mostly fatigue failure can occur at stress well below the static elastic strength of the material so say for example if a material can withstand maximum of this much strength just as a static body i am i am not talking any a moment as a static body it can withstand this much strength and then failure right but if you take the same material right if you apply this fatigue for i mean fatigue uh, cyclic stress this will not be stand up to here this may break somewhere here okay so that's what it's saying mostly fatigue failure occurs stress well below the static elastic strength of the material so in this case fatigue case if you apply cyclic loading this will not stay until static elastic strength right that will be uh, broken far beyond the limit all right so this is the failure with the fatigue so if we are testing for fatigue we do not need to go for maximum load right we do not need to go for maximum load but we have to go for maximum cyclic loadings so in fatigue what we test is how many cycle it will withstand cycle mean cycle mean this cycle right so how many so this is one cycle one crust and one tough one cycle this is another cycle one crust and one tough right so like this how many maximum cycles it can uh, stay that is what tested in the fatigue test right not for how much of maximum load it can be at. that is not being tested in fatigue test right that is tested in either hook flow or tensile test you see it. but fatigue maximum cycles before failure it will withstand right then we'll see main parameters influencing the fatigue life right main parameters influencing the fatigue life fatigue life of a member or of a structural detail subjected to repeated cyclic load is defined as the number of stress cycles it can stand before failure right so you see the fatigue life of a member or of a structural detail subjected to repeated cyclic loadings right repeated cyclic loadings so again and again and again and again it is subject to that particular cyclic loading is defined as the number of stress cycles it can stand before its failure right so how many cycles it will stand before it is it uh, resulted in the failure uh, depending upon the member of structural detail geometry 
its fabrication or the material used four main parameters can influence the fatigue strength so these four parameters can influence the fatigue strength uh, stress difference or as most often called as stress range right so the stress difference mean the difference between the maximum and minimum stress so this is your cycle mean if this is a one cycle which mean this is maximum and this is minimum right so this difference will be known as the stress difference or stress range right so stress range is maximum range and minimum range then the structural detail geometry right so the shape or geometry of the structure then i have material characteristics so we might have used a material or mixture of materials right the characteristics of that materials so the characteristic of the material in the sense the number of cycles taking for aluminium and steel will not be the same right so that's why a characteristics of the material uh, then i have the environment right environmental factors will also have some influence in the uh, fatigue life right so we'll see how is that so here is a diagram for fatigue loading cycles so it can be of three types right fully reversed or repeated or fluctuating right so not much difference only the uh, axis or center point is being different all the other things are same right so in fully reversed if you see about the zero the symmetrical axis is passing and about the zero the maximum and minimum strengths are occurring right so this will be your cycle right so the sigma max and sigma minimum the range is delta sigma right delta sigma so this is for fully reversed then i have repeated for repeated only thing is this axis which is in zero is shifted to this positive side right that's all every other things are same cycle is same sigma max and sigma min the uh difference is delta sigma right but here the average right that is zero if you take this as plus x and this as minus x then that is zero but here that will have some value all right and they have fluctuating study right so there the axis will go further towards positive and other thing is this will not touch the zero level right not touch the zero level the axis so which means the axis is above zero level but the minimum point is also above zero level right so here also this is the maximum point sigma max here is a minimum point sigma minimum this is the delta sigma the range all right this is the range so only thing is the axis is being changing for different types rest of the phenomena is same so delta sigma is the sigma max minus sigma minima so delta sigma means difference right so in the previous slide we saw stress difference so that's this sigma max minus sigma min sigma max minus sigma min so which means that uh, this region right so this is stress strange all right then i have alternating component that is sigma a right sigma a right this one is the alternative component that is delta sigma by 2 delta sigma is sigma max minus sigma min by 2 right so this alternating component is half of that sigma max and sigma min you see sigma max and sigma min is the stress range half of the stress range is the alternating component right you see half of the stress range is the alternating component right so this component is going to repeat again and again and again you see the sigma a this is the region right this component this is sigma a all right so this component is going to repeat again and again you see here also that component here also that component here also that component here also that component so that's why it is known as alternating component again and again and again this component is going to repeat then i have mean component right mean component so you know how to calculate mean so as usual uh, what you do in the statistics 
that is simply sigma max plus sigma minimum by 2 right max plus minimum by 2 so there only this mean component only this axis will pass so here if you see sigma max plus sigma min by 2 that will give you zero so there the axis will be passing through the zero but here sigma max and sigma min they have two values so if you divide it by 2 that will pass through a point which is actually mid of these two that will not pass through the zero point right so that's why it is called as mean component maximum stress plus minimum stress divided by 2 here also the case is same maximum stress plus minimum stress divided by 2 is the uh stress or mean component right then i have amplitude ratio right amplitude ratio so amplitude you know this is the amplitude right as like is the no other diagrams this is the amplitude a is equal amplitude ratio a is equal to sigma a upon sigma a sigma a is your alternative component that is this one divided by sigma m that is your mean component right that is a plus i mean max plus minimum by 2 right so that will give you the amplitude ratio then i have stress ratio right stress ratio sigma min upon sigma max so this sigma minimum sigma that is minimum stress upon maximum stress minimum stress upon maximum stress will give you stress range r right so that is not denoted as r so these are few types of fatigue loadings and terms which are actually used in this uh, fatigue terms so cyclic stress right so the previous slide we saw types of fatigue loading we'll see now cyclic stress so the first diagram you are looking at stress right so there axis is zero symmetric and it is periodical so that's why it is mentioned as periodic and symmetrical about zero stress symmetrical about zero right so this is zero symmetrical about zero and periodic so this is occurring in a period like a kind of regular right then this what periodic and asymmetrical about zero stress so but here we have zero here but it is symmetry about this right so this value is not zero so that's why the name is given periodic and asymmetrical about zero stress so this is also periodic you see this is regular but this is not symmetry about zero this is symmetry about some other points right so this is periodic and asymmetric about zero axis this is not symmetric about zero axis but symmetric about some other points right so this name is given as periodic and asymmetrical about zero axis or zero stress then this is another type of stress right that is random stress fluctuation so there you see there is no any proper pattern right and we also don't know whether it is passing through zero or not right so this is not periodic if it is periodic then this should be like this regular so this is not periodic and symmetric about zero which means this need to pass through zero this one we don't know whether zero is right so this is random stress fluctuation this is neither periodic or no symmetric this is random stress fluctuation right so these are a few cyclic stresses which can occur fatigue failure under fluctuating stress right so fatigue failure i told you under fluctuating stress is logger under fluctuating or cyclic stresses failure can occur at lower loads than under a static load so i told you if a body can withstand about say for example 100 kg if it is static right while uh, cyclic stress under cyclic stress or loading it may be able to withstand only 50 kg right these are just example values right so just to explain you this statement right under fluctuating of cyclic stresses failure can occur at a lower load than under static load right so if an object um mm, uh, a structure will fail at 100 kg stress a static stress we can't expect that structure to fail at 100 g while it is given a cyclic stress this may be well below this 100 kg may be at 50 or 40 or something like that this will fail under cyclic loads right 
90% of all failures of metallic structures bridges aircraft missing components so 90% of cause for failure is due to the fatigue failure right most of the structures you see bridges aircraft mission components so these all the main uh, feature or main uh, reason for the failure is fatigue failure fatigue failure is brittle like even if normally ductile materials the sudden and catastrophic so even if the material is ductile the failure is brittle right so what will happen if you put down a glass that will break immediately similar case if you uh, take about the fatigue failure of a aluminium bar also that will not show you symptoms of okay fatigue stress uh, crack started st crack growing like that it will not show any symptoms it will keep on rotating at a point it will suddenly break into two pieces right so whether the material is ductile or brittle but the fatigue failure will always be brittle so bearing housing specimen this is a specimen you see a kind of dumbbell shape so this will keep on rotating right and here is a flexible coupling right so by applying load you see you by applying load this is not allowed to rotate in a symmetrical axis right it is usually what will happen if it is if there is no load that will rotate like this by adding some loads here this is actually forced to take an axis like this okay you can imagine right this is forced to take an axis like this so here is our coupling and this is a bearing housing all right so here is a high, high speed motor so what will happen with this load this will rotate like a kind of buckling cycle right S is stress versus N is number of cycles to failure. Right. So the graph of uh, fatigue uh, failure will be drawn for as known, known as SN curve. So usually we call it as SN curve. So the S is stress and N is number of cycles for that failure. Right. So in graph, okay. So stress. Probably that would be in some uh, some diagram like this. Okay, so maybe ten to the power two, ten to the power three, ten to the power four, like this. Number of cycles will be increasing. Okay, so since this is a large number, we don't put like one, two, three, four, five, ten, hundred, thousand like that. We will put it as ten to the powers. All right. Sus versus number of cycles of failure. Low cycle failure small number of cycles right so if your structure is failing at 10 to the power 5 and below right 10 to the power 5 and below which is known as low cyclic fatigue right low cycle fatigue high loads plastic and elastic deformation so based on that you can assume whether to use that one in that use your sample in that particular application or not then I have high cycle failure, high cycle fatigue, large number of cycles, low loads. That is n greater than 10 to the power 5 cycles, so beyond 10 to the power 5 cycles. So usually we prefer uh, samples or materials which would last for 10 to the power 7 cycles, right? Usually. So there, uh, number of cycles is large, but the load is low right the low cycle failure load is high cycles is low right number of cycle is low right so this is how we draw the sn curve based on this observation of the motor right so high cycle failure you see 10 to the power 5 6 7 8 and 9 so i told you while high cyclic failure uh, high cyclic failure usually above 10 to the power 5 so that's why actually this graph is started from 10 to the power 5 right uh, so there are two samples shown one is mild steel and the other one is aluminium alloys you see the number of cycles for both are same right number of cycle is 10 to the power 5 6 7 8 and 9 but the load which can be withstand by both the materials are different 
So mind shield it is starting somewhere around at 55, producing and staying at uh, around 35. But the aluminium alloys, they are keep on producing from around 40 to 10. Still, it has a tendency in this way, right? So which means we can expect that one to go in such a way or something like this, but we can't produ product, uh, predict that one, right? That's an assumption. So until this, we know what will happen, right? But for mild steel, with 10 to the power 7, it's stable at 35, right? So which means at 35 uh, stress limit, right? This will not fail, right? So what will happen? This will go like this. So here, the, some def uh, definitions is mentioned. Stress is elastic on gross scale. So the stress is elastic. Locally, the metal deforms plastically. Okay, right. So metal deformation is mentioned. Apply controlled delta sigma. That is sigma applied is less than two third of sigma yield. Right. So sigma applied means applied strength. Right. And this is yield strength. Right. So while we are applying a load, control delta sigma. So control load is two third of the applied uh, yield strength, right? So if a uh, metal is capable of withstanding 99, right? As the yield strength, two thirds of 99 is 66. We will apply in order to test this fatigue failure, right? So this is all about high cyclic fatigue, right? So high cyclic fatigue, the number of cycles are above and there were five, right? And this is stress. So this is a usual fatigue curve. Usually the fatigue curve will be like this. From a point, it will keep on reducing, reducing, reducing. And at a particular stage, that will take the horizontal line, right? That is called as fatigue limit, right? So you start from somewhere. So 10 to three, four, five, six, seven, number of cycles keep on increasing, right? So the stress amplitude will be keep on decreasing. At a particular point, it will be parallel to the horizontal axis, which means x-axis, right? So there we can assume this metal will not fail after this incident, right? This will keep on working. Fatigue limit, some Fe and Ta alloys, right? So this is shown for some Fe and Ta alloys. So don't assume that all the metals will be behave like this. This is for Fe and Ti alloys. What I'm saying is probably or usually a structure which is taking a such a shape will not fail after that. SN curve becomes horizontal at large n. So when you keep on increasing the number of n, this will be horizontal. Stress amplitude below which the material never fails, no matter how large the number of cycle is. So below the stress amplitude, right? Below the stress amplitude, the material will never fail, right? So below this one, the material will never fail, no matter how large the number of cycle is. So whether it's 10 to the power 10 or 10 to the power 20, doesn't matter, this structure will not fail, right? So while designing, if that particular instrument or part is undergoing fatigue stress what we need to know is what is the fatigue limit and what is the stress amplitude so this is one type of fatigue curves that's why it's mentioned sn curve 2 there's another type of curves you can see right that is 3 so the type of curve so that's what i show in the case of aluminium right so this is similar to this mild steel you see mild steel similar to this curve aluminium which is similar to this curve. Now we'll see about this curve. Right? So this is applicable for most alloys. So this type of curves are applicable for most alloys. The previous diagram is applicable for most of the Fe and Ta alloys, right? Here S decreases with N. So S is stress. So when you keep on increasing the cycles, stress will keep on decreasing, right? S decreases with N. When you increase the S, uh, the N will decrease. 
Fatigue strength, stress at which fracture occurs after specified number of cycles. Example 10 about 7 now, endurance strength, right? So fatigue strength means stress at which fracture occurs after specified number of cycles. So say for example, we have specified that, okay, if it's which stand for 10 to the power 7 cycles, it is enough. So this is like a kind of warranty for the materials, right? So if you are taking a bulb, for example, you will be given some hours, right? thousand hours, it will work, something like that, a kind of warranty. So here also we will specify the number of cycles, right? So stress at which fracture occurs after specified number of cycles is known as fatigue strength. Then we have fatigue life. Fatigue life is number of cycles to fail at specified stress level. So number of cycles to fail at specified stress level. So here you are specifying the number of cycles. All right. You need to be careful on this. Here fatigue strength, you are specifying the number of cycles. But in fatigue life, you are specifying the number of, not number of cycles, stress level. So here we are looking at number of cycles at particular stress level. Say for example, fatigue life, all right, specified stress level. Say for example, I specified this as my stress level, okay. So it will come like this, come like this and stay this, right. So number of cycles to fail at specified stress level. So how many number of cycles occurring this one to fail. So this one need not to be like this. This can be something like this also. So it should be going like this. So at this point for how many cycles it's staying, right? So this is fatigue life. I have fatigue strength, which means stress at which fracture occurs after specified number of cycles. So here I specify the number of cycles, right? I specify, okay, it should work for 10 to the power 7 cycles. So there, they will check with the first stress. Okay, that is working fine. Then they will increase the stress. There also it's working fine. Then when they increase the stress, there's a possibility that may break, right? So this stress is not applicable. So they are going for the, they will go for the, next stress right so experimentally this is how we find this one so fatigue strength specified number of cycles so this is fixed what is the strength this is fatigue strength fatigue life this is fixed what is the number of cycle right so these two are two statements right so don't confuse with fatigue strength and fatigue life these are completely different right so in first one we fix the cycle and look the stress here we fix the stress and look the cycles the process right fatigue process how does this fatigue occurs first one crack initiation right so when we see after a certain number of cycle crack initiation then the next one stage one crack growth stage two crack growth so these two can be combined into one crack growth right and then ultimate failure right so fatigue process usually we write it as uh, three steps here we write it as four steps crack initiation crack propagation so this crack growth we say it as crack propagation and ultimate failure right so we see the first one crack initiation crack initiation means early development of damage so when the cyclic stress is applied at a particular stage, crack would be initiated. We could not observe that's a different story, right? That is the initiation of the crack. Then crack growth or propagation. So after a certain time, crack will, say for example, if the crack is initiated here, then that will propagate into the metal, right? Deepening of initial crack on shear planes, right? So deepening, which means getting inside the metal. Then growth of well-defined crack on planes normal to maximum tensile stress. So here, why it is mentioned as two steps, stage one crack growth and stage two crack growth is here the crack is on shear planes, 
right so shear stress i told you if you have number of objects like this force which is applied on this way is the shear stress so the object will be like this all right and here growth of well-defined cracks on planes normal to maximum tensile stress so if your tensile stress is this way the stress will be on this way all right normal to this maximum tensile stress so this is why here it is mentioned as two stage crack growth but these two can be combined into propagation right crack propagation after these two occur then ultimate failure then what will happen one part will be break like this one part will be break like this so one resembles the shape of a cone and one resembles the shape of a cup right so this is a fatigue process crack initiation crack propagation and ultimate failure okay so we will see little bit deeper into this crack initiation and propagation right the three stages crack initiation in the areas of stress concentration near stress rises in motions existing uh, cracks that is not bracks it is cracks right incremental crack propagation rapid growth propagation after crack reaches critical size crack initiation in the areas where stress concentration so say for example i am saying for example if you assume the weight will act in the mid of the uh, object so this is the stress concentration region right so similarly all uh, structures they have stress concentration regions so there the crack will start to initiate then incremental crack propagation so once the crack is started then with this uh, body rotating again and again that will go deeply into the uh, part right so that is incremental crack propagation so this is actually uh, make the situation worse right then rapid crack propagation after crack reaches critical size so when this crack propagation is keep on increasing at a certain time that will reach a limit right at that limit rapid crack propagation after crack reaches critical size so when it is reaches some size there will be rapid propagation all right so after that there will be a failure so these are the stages the total number of cycles to failure is the sum of cycles at the first and the second stages so number of cycles to failure nf number of cycles for crack initiation ni number of cycles for crack propagation np so in simple words start to the end of the crack is known as number of cycles of failure so they have div divided it into two pieces so up to certain level crack initiation and then crack propagation right so you know if it is failure means that is complete functioning of the uh, particular body so number of cycles to fade here this is the total number here the numbers for initiation so crack will initiate after a certain time that is crack initiation ni then number of cycles for crack propagation after the initiation crack will propagate right so that is say for example here the crack is initiated that is 10 to the power 2 then from here to here crack is propagated and there it's broken that is 10 to the power 6 mean this 2 plus this much so that is completely this much all right this region plus this region which is that is stress region so that is nf number of cycles for failure which is equal to crack initiation plus crack propagation high cycle fatigue low loads and nice relatively high so in the previous uh, slides we saw a type of uh, fatigue failure high cycle fatigue so high cycle fatigue mean number of cycles is high high cycle fatigue that is number of cycles is high so if the number of cycles is high which mean in other words the load is low right 
ni is relatively high this ni is relatively high which means the time taken for the initiation of the crack in high cycle fatigue is high with increasing stress level ni decreases and np dominates with increasing stress level which means when the low loads to we are changing the load to high loads right so here it is low loads so that there it is ni is high when you increase the load right when you bring the loads to high this i decreases that is initiation number of steps so initiation it increases decreases and p propagates right increasing stress level ni decrease and np dominate dominate mean it will increase so there the number of cycles for the you know uh, initiation of the crack is low but for the propagation it is high so this is the phenomenon of the high cycle fatigue condition so usually the number of cycles of failure is the total of uh, number of cycles taken for propagation and initiation so both combinedly will give you the uh, number of cycles for the occurrence of fatigue right all right so these are a few failure structures of are shown here right uh brittle versus ductile failure fracture actually fracture ductile materials extensive plastic deformation and energy absorption toughness before fracture so ductile materials uh, these uh, materials are ductile materials so extensive plastic deformation and energy absorption so when you see plastics if you have worked in utm universal testing machine we use this one for tensile test stress, uh, testing right so what we do is we have a bar right and bar and we pull it by two jaws in both the direction so what will happen that will elongate getting thin and at certain stage it will break all right so this is the uh, scene for this ductile materials extensive plastic deformation so this deformation is called as the plastic deformation so if you have seen the hooke's law graph it is going like this mean that is elastic right elastic deformation which mean it will regain its shape when you remove the force so this is force right so when you are applying force this will go like that when you remove the force it will be back right but plastic deformation mean when you are applying force this will go like this but when you given i mean when you retain that will not come back so that's why this is also mentioned as plastic deformation because you know if you pull an iron bar right like this and if you leave the force that will not come like this no that will not come like this that's why it is called as plastic deformation so you need to understand the difference between plastic deformation and elastic deformation uh, which is clearly explained you in the hooke's law uh, and energy absorption so when it is going to the stage of plastic deformation energy will be applied because what you are energy using to pull this one is somewhere stored right before fracture brittle materials so here is your ductile you right brittle materials little plastic deformation and low energy absorption before fracture so you see this region is usually considered as plastic deformation the curved region so here this curved region is known as plastic deformation until there the straight line in both the cases known as elastic deformation right so here plastic deformation is high elastic deformation is low but in the brittle material plastic is low but the elastic is high you see so this is the difference between elastic and plastic deformation and forces right and the next diagram it is shown abc three phases of breakage right moderately ductile fracture typical for metals uh, very ductile soft metals pbau at room temperature polymers glasses at high temperature and the third one c 
when the second diagram what you see is a very ductile for example pb and au pb is lead and au is gold and third one brittle structure ceramics and cold metals so this is the phase of fracture usually right usually i am saying this would be the stage so this is for moderately ductile fracture these are very ductile these are very brittle right so the end would be like this so these are three possible break surfaces after the occurrence of breaking right so this is brittle versus ductile fracture right so what's the difference between brittle and ductile fracture okay then we have ductile fracture right uh, how this is actually occurring the phase how the phase is actually occurring dislocation mediated so we have seen certain stages like crack initiation crack propagation and all right so there you see this was the actual so before applying any force this could be like this right so you are applying a force so it is being elongated so it is getting thin right this is getting thin again you are applying forces right so they are still further thinning and there is small crack cavities started you see crack cavities started you're further increasing the load these are joined together to form a big cavity you see here it was like small small cavities number of small cavities but when it come here they are joined for a bigger uh, cavity you further increase the strength right so now the cracks actually inside will reach to the surface of the metal and at last you further increase the uh, force that will break right so why i said you can't observe the crack formation is you see crack is initiated inside propagated inside when it comes to the top surface almost here it is broken right so that's why i said you can't observe the uh, fracture that will just rotate at a particular time and immediately break and because while rotating these all things have already happened right? this has thinned the crack is generated then the small cavity become large then the crack is go to the crack has actually reach this surface and then only it has broken but when we get to know only this reaches the surface only we will get to know this right then there will be a uh, breakage so this each step have certain names right necking you see since this is in the form of a neck neck you know right so if this is your face this is your shoulder so this is what called as neck so since this is a smaller part between a big head and big body that is called as necking here because this part is also big this part is also big this region is small so that's why it is called as necking right by name you can remember that is necking then b cavity formation right so these small small holes cavity formation now the cavity is started to form then cavity coils form crack so this word coils mean they join together to form a big cavity this is applicable for cavity also so the word coils is joining together to form a big cluster right so need not only to be cavity uh, kind of some particles small small particles getting in together and becoming a, a big particle this is also coils right so the word coils mean small particles gather together to form a big particle right so these small cavities gathered to form a big cavity so cavities coils then crack propagation so once this is done crack will be propagated to the surface then fracture right then it is fracture right then it is fracture so this is what i said the cup and cone so the top surface you see in this shape and bottom surface in this shape right so this is like 
cone and this would be like cup right so if you imagine that is like upside down cup right and this is a cone right so these are the uh, steps involved in ductile fracture right so these are few factors affecting the fatigue life all right uh, application environment loads type of stresses material confidence we have already seen this magnitude of stress right so fatigue i told you whether the magnitude is high or low based on that it will take a shape then quality of the surface so surface quality solutions right so if these are the problems what could be the solutions polish surface if the surface is not quality right you can polish it so that's why it's given quality of the surface if it is not gone you can polish it introduce compressive stresses combine that to apply tensile stresses into surface layer so your failure is actually occurring due to the tensile stress all right tensile stress so if your structure is actually undergoing tensile stress automatically what you can do is you apply some compressive stress to the structure so that this compressive stress and this tensile stress will be cancelled out and becoming zero all right so this they are saying another way of you know is compressive stresses to compensate for tensile stresses into the surface layer so these two methods short peening and high tech iron implantation laser peening fire small shot into the surface so these all are to uh, make the comp uh, actually compressive force right then we have case hardening so in iron treatment right there are certain experiments not experiments activities you can do to uh, make the hard, surface hard right so there are several activities so this iron which actually undergoes this annealing hardening tempering you might have heard these terms right so case hardening mean you make the surface only the surface hard right so that could be achieved uh, steel create c o n rich out layer by atomic diffusion from surface so this can be applied uh, to make the surface uh, strengthy you put some carbon and you need to give some fire but everything should be in a controlled environment right uh, there you will obtain a material where the surface is actually hard in case hardening hard outer layer introduce compressive stresses optimize geometry avoid internal corners notches etc so geometry so a simple geometry something like this or something like this are fine so complex geometry is having corners and notches and all they are readily available for fracture right so don't go for them so corners in the sense maybe if you have one part here and maybe you joined another part here right so then the chance of fatigue in this region would be high right so that's why it's mentioned avoid internal corners or notches etc right so these are few factors that can affect fatigue life then we see how this environment affect the fatigue life thermal fatigue so thermal fatigue means thermal cycling causing expansion and contraction hence thermal stress so which mean temperature rises and coming down rises and coming down so this uh, say for example i am saying this uh, railway tracks which can experience this thing if it is summer then they will be there around 35 40 if it is winter then that will be around 25 30 right so which will induce thermal stress so summer season higher temperature winter season lower summer season higher winter season lower like this this will form a cyclic stress so thermal cycling causing expansion and contraction so when temperature increases it will expand when temperature decreases that will contract so actually what will happen the railway track in high temperature it will go like this in low temperature it will come like this all right so this is a reason so thermal fatigue has some effect on the environment
then change design solution right change design so that's why the gap is provided in between the tracks right and use materials with low thermal expansion coefficient right so if temperature is going up and down up and down if you are using a met uh, metal or material which has less thermal expansion then that will not undergo a huge change maybe a small slight change will be there then that is not a big problem right so that's why it mentioned in order to prevent from thermal fatigue use materials with low thermal expansion coefficient right so instead of aluminium if we are using a uh, steel or hard steel right then thermal expansion is low uh, then i have corrosion fatigue so in the while studying corrosion also you have studied this one right chemical reactions induces spits which act as stress raises right corrosion also enhances crack propagation so when you have this uh, corrosion right the results of it the cavities right or pits so we they will act as stress raisers so these pits mean that surface is actually reduced right whether it's in the surface or in the inside if there's a pit which means the surface is actually reduced so there the chances of fatigue is high right chances of fatigue is high corrosion also enhances crack propagation right so when there is a cavity then when you apply the cyclic load that is automatic that crack will propagate right and solution for that decrease corrosiveness of medium right so the act, uh, working medium right the working environment reduce the corrosiveness of it at protective surface coating so at protective surface coating for this one so that to prevent from corrosion then i have at residual compressive stresses so as like in the previous slide since tensile stresses causing fatigue failure you apply compressive stress so this tensile stress will be cancelled out by this compressive stress and will result no elongation or activity right so this is how you can solve the fatigue due to corrosion all right